I, I have all personally, I've always been intrigued by the power of a locker room. Um, the, the locker room for a team is a safe haven. It's a sanctuary, if you will. It's, it's a place, uh, a fortress. It's a place of refreshing, reviving, restoration, and replenishing. Locker room is where the team congregates as it prepares for the rest of the game. It's a place that is privately tucked away from the private eye, from the public eye. It's strategically settled in the tunnels of obscurity. It's securely placed behind a closed locked door so that the coaches can deal with the team. And no matter what happened in the first half of the game, it's the coach's assignment to give the team hope while they're in the locker room. If you're winning by 20 points, the coach is supposed to keep you focused on your task. I remember coaches saying to us, act like the score is still zero to zero. You, you're winning by 20 points, but they want to keep you focused. But, but if you're losing by 20 points, the coach is supposed to light a fire. Did y'all just hear me? Uh, I, I said, if you had a great first half, you, you, you still need to stop in the locker room so the coach can keep you focused. But if you had a terrible first half, you, you need to journey through the locker room so that the coach can light a fire. And, and as I look at each individual uh, in this room today, I don't know if you need to focus or if you need someone to light a fire, but I feel compelled to tell you that you're in the locker room right now. Uh, and, and the coaches, uh, Mr. Mr. Ken Maxson, Mr. Howard Lewis, the coaches uh, have shown up today with an agenda, and their agenda is to bring focus and to bring and to light a fire under you. It's time for Dynasty to get ready for the second half. Some of you, some of you are way ahead of your goals. <laughs> For 2016, and some of you are way behind on your goals for 2016. But no matter where you find yourself on the spreadsheet, you ought to thank God that the coaches have called you into the locker room. It's halftime. The, the, the first half of the year is over. It's, it's time for Dynasty to gear up for a second half round. The coaches have called you into the locker room to prepare you for this final push. The first half is over. And, and you know, at, at halftime, teams are tired. They're, they're frustrated. And, and that's why the locker room is a place of refreshment. It's a place of rejuvenation. It's a place of restoration. And, and that's why you're in Chicago right now. That You're here to be recharged. That's the first thing I want you to get. You're here to be recharged. You're, you're here to kick your feet up. You're, you're here to have some fun. And that's why you went to the aquarium or to the zoo on yesterday. That, that's why you were kicking it last night in that roaring uh, 20s party. And that's why we're getting ready to go watch the Cubs. And, and, that, and that, that's why we'll be on a boat tonight watching the fireworks. All of these events are tailor-made uh, to recharge us for the second half. But not only do we come to the locker room to be recharged, we also come to the locker room to reconnect. When a team is playing in a hostile <coughs> environment, they have to deal with their opponent. They have to deal with referees. They have to deal with fans booing them and cheering them and cheering against them. And, and they're in a hostile environment and they have to go into the locker room to reconnect with one another. And every day when you leave your house, you head into a hostile environment. <laughs> Oh, yes, you do. You, you got doors slamming in your face. You, you got people unwilling to make no-brainer decisions. You, 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 you're in 100-degree weather. You've got recruits that will disappoint you. You've got family members that are telling you to go get a real job. It's a hostile environment out there. So the team comes into the locker room so they can reconnect with their teammates. They lock the rest of the world out so they can reconnect with life like-minded individuals who have the same goals that they do. They create a bunker-like mentality. They create an us-against-the-world mentality. And that powerful reconnection will give you what you need for a second-half rally. 
You, you enter the locker room to be recharged. You enter the locker room to reconnect. And then thirdly, you enter the locker room to be reassigned. Maybe, maybe you didn't do everything you were supposed to do in the first half of the game. Maybe you weren't in the right places defensively and you, you got out of position and you let your man score on you. And so the coach will go to the chalkboard in the locker room at halftime and the coach will say, this is where you were really supposed to be. If you want to win, we need you to get over here instead of being over there. If you want to win, we need you in the field, not at noon, but we need you in the field a little bit earlier. If in, the, in the first half, you let your man score too much. You need to play better defense. Somebody say reassign. Right. In the first half, you didn't do enough demos. You, you, in the first half, you didn't work enough hours. In the first half, you didn't knock on enough doors. In the first half, you didn't ask for enough referrals. So you come into the locker room so that the coaches, so the coaches can reassign you. And that, that reminds me, I, I'm glad that the chief brought it up of that story of that LeBron told uh, after Game Seven of the NBA Finals. Uh, here, here's what here's what LBJ said. He said his coach coach came into the locker room at halftime and his coach said if we're going to win this game I need more say more he, he said, I need more out of everybody. Ty Tyrone Lou looked at all of them and said, I need more out of you. I need more out of you. I need more out of you. And I need more out of you. And then he waited. The last person he focused in on was LBJ. He looked at LeBron after addressing the whole team. And he said, I especially need more out of you. Because LeBron is the best Player. His coach held his feet to the fire more than everybody else. And, and that's why Coach Ken Matson and Coach Howard Lewis are in this locker room today because they are coming to the best player and they're saying to the best player, we need more out of you in the second half. If we're going to do the things that we need to do in the second half and we're going to give up for the second half rally, we need more out of the best player. Second half, the first half is over. And uh, I need an extra effort, the coach says, out of the best player to lead us to victory in the second half. And so the locker room is so that you can be recharged. It's so that you can reconnect. It's so that you can be reassigned. And finally, then I'm out. Uh, it's so that you can be reminded. Co coaches use the locker room to remind the team of exactly what they came to do. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe you got so frustrated in the first half that you kind of lost focus. And so the coach brings you into the locker room so he can look you in your eye and say, I want to remind you of our exact goal. And here's the goal. It's very simple. The goal is to win. That, that, that's, why, that's why you're here. The coach will say at the locker room, I don't care what the scoreboard says right now. We came here to win. I don't care how many shots you miss in the first half. We came here to win. It doesn't matter how many turnovers you committed in the first half. Coach will look at you in the locker room at halftime and say, forget about all that. I'm coming to remind you that we came here to win. Win for your family. Win for the people that are headed towards financial devastation. If you don't knock on their door, win for the company. Win for your teammates. Win for yourself. Sometimes you just need to be reminded in the locker room the goal is to win. So the locker room is to be recharged. The locker room is to be reconnected. The locker room is to be reassigned. And finally, the locker room is to be reminded. And that's all I got for you. But 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 that, that's it. I'm finished. But. But before I sit down, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm reminded of when uh, I was a senior in high school in 1998. I played for a player for Little Rock Parkview. Historic, historically great school there in Little Rock. Great basketball tradition. We were playing against Springdale High in the state championship down in the Pine Bluff Convention Center. And let me just be honest, this was a championship game. We had a terrible first half. Terrible. Coach got us in the locker room and coach said, listen, nobody out there <laughs> believes we're going to win. And that's why the only people that matter are the people that's in this locker room right now. And coach said, they don't believe that you're going to win. 
and then looked at each of us and said, but I need you to believe. And he, he looked all of us in the eye. And Coach said this. He said these words. He said, listen, if you don't believe we're going to win, I, I, I know we're losing right now. I know it doesn't look good right now. But Coach said, if you don't believe you're going to win, take your jersey off right now, put it in the floor, and when we go out there to battle, you stay in the locker room. Because I only need people to leave this locker room and go to, into the second half who really believe that we're going to win. And Coach said, listen, I'm serious. I don't need any coward soldiers with me. And so if you don't believe we're going to win, Coach said, take your jersey off right now, put it in the pile, and I only want the people leaving here with me. And I believe that's what Larry Salerno and, and, and the rest of these coaches are saying right now. These, the rest of these coaches are saying, I only need people with me who believe. And I know you got talent. I know you got it going on. I know you're fine, you're sexy, you're cute, and all that other good stuff. But if you don't believe that we're going to win, I don't need you on my team. So close up your laptop. Close up your book. Go ahead and turn in your sales kit and go get a real job. Because only the people that leave this locker room need to believe that the second half rally belongs to Dynasty. Amen. Yes, sir.